<sighs> Welcome to another wet and cold video. We're going to uh, take a look at my uh, rear brakes, rear brakes, rear brakes on the truck. I have one wheel that's not engaging uh, because it's not getting any fluid. And I also have one side that's uh, sounding a little itchy and scratchy, so um, I don't know when the rear brakes have ever been done. I don't, I, they could be completely factory for all I know. So anyways, we're going to uh, move the flex out of the way and then back the truck in here a little bit. I'm going to have to move some stuff so I can get it in where it's dry and where I can work on it. And uh, well, let's go see if it'll start for one thing. Three pumps. One pump. It's gonna be a little pain in the ass here. I think I know exactly what it's what's going on too. I'm gonna go pop, pop that choke on. Okay, let's try again. Choke's on like part way now. So the thing is, if the choke works, it'll make it run rich like it's supposed to when it's cold, then it'll run, it'll run fine. All right, let's move it. <laughs> now she's running fine after she moved. Oh, this thing. All it is is the fucking carburetor, that's all. The carburetor in its in its choke when it's not working properly for whatever reason. Otherwise, motor runs fine once it warms up. It's got a freaking airlock. Alright. It's probably dripping oil or water everywhere back here. too bad. Can't move it in too far because, uh, well, I didn't bother moving this shit out of the way and uh, also I got another like three feet of truck here so. Alright, we got our wheel chocks that have been ran over twice. I think backed into a little bit with this truck and then ran over by an S10. Like literally the whole back end of an S10 just ran it over. Um, so what I did is just jacked it up by the pumpkin and then is uh 80 percent of the weight is supported by both the jack stands so we got it up just enough to where we can move both tires and i feel a little bit of drag right there pretty pretty bad pretty bad so we're gonna take a look at see what's going on of course i don't feel like firing up the air compressor and getting my air impacts so i'm gonna use the electric guy switch sockets because one of my sockets is actually a slightly smaller is this one I swear this has had new axles before those studs look way too way too clean way too new that's okay we have our pretend tripod Okay, so what we got, well, we have his drum brakes. Yeah, it feels real tight in one spot. I bet you, I bet you it's out of adjustment. 
Nothing like it's nothing. I mean, we're gonna need new brakes here pretty soon. Ah! That's why it's getting itchy and scratchy. We're down to the rivets on this side. At least this, this one here is good. This side is, is pretty, look at that. Okay, at least nothing's broken. I do believe these are self-adjusting brakes anyways. Should be fairly easy putting them back together. I am gonna buy some brake tools so we can take this stuff out easy-ish. Yeah, I almost have a feeling this has had new axles put in. Or at least new studs. Look at this. They're, they're like, maybe they're like that from factory? I don't know. They just look good. Now I'll get that push tool. It pushes the spring in. And get the other tools that break this stuff loose. Yeah, a lot of shit in here. So, yeah, we're down to the rivets. We need new shoes. And new drums. If anybody's curious as to how the brake size on this, this on this truck is 11 inch brake. This side, thankfully, is one size. Which is 13 16 Man, this socket is hammered. Quite literally. Whoops. Can't wait to get new brakes. This airbag over a little bit, I can see it's a little catty wampus. Sorry to be completely random, but oh. yeah, this side is definitely not used at all. Hardly, anyways. Kind of shiny, actually. It's pretty near. I'll give you a close shot. So here's the other side. Oh yeah, she's leaking a little bit. So we're gonna need wheel cylinders, shoes. Ah, it's this side that's itchy and scratchy. I didn't catch that. Holy shit. At least we have the other side as a reference. This spring is supposed to connect up here. Ah. Uh huh. What I want to know is where did the. Oh, there he is. There's the other part of the spring. Yeah, that was uh, rubbing on the drum somewhere. Probably right here. Huh. Cool, I like seeing broken stuff. I mean, even if it didn't have rear brakes, the front brakes work pretty good, and it has a really, really nice brake pedal, so I mean, it. It, uh, you hit the brakes hard enough, it'll fucking lock the wheels up. Anyways, let's go talk about one other thing before we go. It's another project I have in mind. For my 351 is, uh, well, we're going to be putting a, or at least I want to put an E4D in this. I want to see how, what it's going to take to do it. And, uh, on top of that, we're going to get an Edelbrock carburetor, like a 500. 
And then we're gonna put a, uh, a cam in it. I think I'm gonna cam it just a little bit. Not to make it sound like a dragster and have a choppy idle, but a smooth idle, but a little bit more horsepower and more torque. Let's see what we can get out of the stock 351 and we'll try and throw headers on it. I don't I don't know how the bolts are going to come out. They might snap and ruin the heads. I don't want to do that. So it's just a few things I'm tossing around there. Um, I was planning to re-gear this. Right now it has a 350. Uh, but I was thinking of doing a 325, which would mean that on a highway doing it 60 with these tires that I have on, which are like 28 inch tires, should put the engine around 2200 RPM, I think, on the highway, which is pretty good. But if I put an E4D in it and I have a 325 in it, then the E4D at 0.71 to 1, which is overdrive, will put the engine RPM doing 60 at about 1700 RPMs, which I kind of think is a little too low to be on the highway. I would like it to be maybe two grand. But then again, it might be good because I believe the operating range of this engine is 1,500 RPMs to uh, like 6,000 or, or, or 4 or 5,000 RPMs, which is its, where its peak power is. But I could be wrong. So I don't know. I might do a little more research, but, but maybe an E4D and a, a 325 rear end would bring the RPMs down pretty low and I'd be able to do about 85 miles an hour with it and uh, be doing the RPMs that it does now which would be cool because then I would definitely consider maybe taking this to a nice long road trip and because it'll get you know better gas mileage Hope, hoping that it'll get better gas mileage I'm hoping that it'll get maybe close to 25 on the highway which would be pretty good I mean it should I mean look at the Look at this thing, it's, a sh it's kind of like just a standard bed, two door, sure it weighs like 5,000 pounds, but anyways, enough chit chatting, I'm going to go put this back together and uh, see how much my parts are going to cost me. Sorry to interrupt, but yep, original rear brakes, huh, that's interesting, 31 years old and just now needs rear brakes. <laughs> 